from the Crumb Church of Christ, and we welcome you to this time of Bible study. Now, today we're doing something somewhat different. I, I chose to present this lesson here in our auditorium uh, at the Crumb Church of Christ, and we want to begin with a scripture reading, and our lesson today is entitled The Vine and the Branches, and it's based upon John 15, verses 1 through 8. And so here we find Jesus says, I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up, and they gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. So now let us pause and go to our Father in prayer. 
Dear God, we pray that our time of study of your word and worship of your great name and coming to you in scripture and prayer and, and, and song and, and pausing to remember your son's death on the cross, we pray all of this be pleasing your sight. Dear God, we love you so much. We pray, Father, that you forgive us of our sins. Help us be forgiving of others. Protect us from the evil one. Father, we pray for your blessings be upon our health and our well-being. Help us to serve you well this week. We pray these things, Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Is it for me, dear Savior, thy glory and thy rest? For me so weak and sinful, oh, shall I be so blessed? O oh, Savior, my Redeemer, what can I but adore? And magnify and praise thee. Church of Christ, I would invite you to uh, have your own Bibles, if you would like, uh, and turn to John 15, verses 1 through 8 for our study today. I would also invite you to follow along with this lesson by looking at the outline on the back of our today's uh, bulletin that you can find either as a PDF attachment to the email where you receive the link for this lesson, or you'll find it also published there in the Crown Church of Christ Facebook page as well. So let us begin this lesson entitled The Vine and the Branches, again based upon John 15 verses 1 through 8. This is very close to Jesus being crucified. And so this lesson is part of the our master's farewell message to his disciples that we find in John 13 to 17. John chapters 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And Jesus in the, this text is teaching that he's going to be separated from his apostles. And he then presents an allegory. And this allegory teaches that though separated in body, there is an ever-present, life-giving, spiritual connection between Christ and his disciples. Now, an allegory is a story in which things have a symbolic meaning. So with that definition, we begin with John 15, verse 1. And Jesus says, I am the true vine, 
and my father's the vine dresser. From this verse, we learn that God is the owner of this vine. A vine dresser is one who owns and cultivates and prunes and tends to the vineyard. God planted Christ in the world as the source of all life. And here we find that Jesus is the true vine, the ultimate earthly vine in this physical world may be a vine called Kudzo. You might have heard of Kudzo. Unfortunately, it was brought from Japan and China to, to stop soil erosion. It now covers much of the southeast part of the United States and is very difficult to contain or control. Kudzo can be the ultimate bad vine if you don't want it around. But our Lord Jesus Christ is the ultimate true vine in the spiritual realm. Unfortunately, there are many bad or false vines in the world. In 1 John 4, verse 1, we find, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false spirits prophets have gone out into the world we also read in second timothy 4 verse 3 for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but wanting to have their ears tickled they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires we must make sure that we are attached to the one and only true vine now, John 15, 2, every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. First, the relationship between the vine and the branches is the same as that between Jesus Christ and each of his disciples. The vine supplies food to the branches just as Jesus, who is one with the Father and is a source of all life, supplies food to us. Jesus is the ultimate source of spiritual food. He is the Word, John 1, verse 1. Paul explained this relationship in Galatians 2, verse 20. He writes, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. When we are crucified with Christ, we are connected to Jesus Christ in the firmest and strongest way possible. Fruit never grows on the vine itself, but always on the branches. And neither can the branches produce fruit without the vine. The same relationship that exists between Christ and his followers exists just as we've seen in this allegory between the vine and the branches. Now, there are various religious groups today that are not the branches mentioned in this verse. The branches are individuals, or as our Lord declares in John 15, 5, you are the branches. When Jesus said, I am the vine, not one of the many religious groups of today was in existence. We are taught in Ephesians 4 verse 4, there is one body. Again, Jesus is the one and true vine. Now, I, I know there are hundreds of different religious groups in the United States today. If the religious denominations of the world are the branches of then that would mean that there are hundreds of different kinds of branches, which would be a funny looking vine. I've never seen a vine with hundreds of different kinds of fruits coming from different kinds of branches from the same vine. You in John 15, five is a personal pronoun. The people in the Lord's church are the branches. If you bear fruit, God will prune you so that you may bear more fruit. Now, I would define pruning as to cut branches from a plant to improve shape or growth or health. 
The more fruit you bear, the more opportunities God will give you to bear fruit. This is a clear indication of God's providential work in the life of a fruit-bearing Christian. How this pruning occurs, we don't know. But we do know that it occurs because the Bible says it occurs. God's providence is often based or best seen through retrospect, looking back in time, and then giving God the credit for the good that has occurred. Much like Paul writes in Philippians 1, verses 12 to 14, Paul says, Now I want you to know, brethren, that my circumstances have turned out for the greater progress of the gospel, so that my imprisonment in the cause of Christ has become well known throughout the whole practice territorian guard and to everyone else and that most of the brethren trusting in the Lord because of my imprisonment have far more courage to speak the word of God without fear so you can see how Paul was proud the way God was pruning him in John 15 3 we find Jesus says you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you Jesus calls his disciples clean here in verse 3. Without God's word in your life, bearing fruit is impossible. Without God's word in your life, spiritual growth is impossible. Jesus taught in John 8, verses 31 to 32. So Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed him, If you continue my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. We also find in John 15, verses 4 through 5, Abide in me, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in a vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, he bears much fruit fruit for apart from me you can do nothing in order for one to produce fruit there must be this vital connection with Jesus Christ for he says for apart from me you can do nothing in John 14 6 Jesus said to him I am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the father but through me Anyone today trying to live apart from Christ is headed for destruction. Such a person needs to come to Jesus. Now, to come to Jesus requires reconciliation. As we find in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 18. Now, all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Now note, the result of baptism or immersion in Romans 6, 4. Therefore we have been buried with him through baptism unto death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. We are not able to walk in newness of life until we have been united with Christ, reconciled to Christ by immersion. And that immersion reconciles us to God. Of course, before you are baptized, you should believe in the teachings of Jesus Christ, repent of your past sins, and confess to the world that you believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Then after you have been immersed, you are to continue to bear fruit all of your life. Now I want you to note the much fruit in John 15, 5. How would the Bible define this? Well, there are nine kinds of fruit listed in Galatians 5, verses 22 through 23, where we find, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, against such things there is no law. Another verse, Colossians 1.10 states, 
so that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord to please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. I want you to understand that bearing fruit is the Christian way of life. Why? Well, we find in James 2, 26, for just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. I want you to understand there's no retirement age for a Christian. And we are encouraged in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. I am reminded by this verse of all the abounding things in our lives, like small children or great waterfalls and so on. Now, the opposite of abounding is found in these words by man. On the plains of hesitation, bleached the, the bones of countless millions who at the dawn of victory sat down to wait and waiting died. I always like that statement. Let us concentrate instead on Matthew 5, 16. Instead of sitting down and waiting, let your light shine before others in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. That is far better than sitting down and letting the world pass us by. The reason we are to bear much fruit is so that God would be glorified. John 15, 8. In John 15, 6, if anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch dries up and they gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. No, you must first be a part of the vine before you can be cut off. John 15, 2. You must be a part of the true vine bearing fruit. Otherwise, we find you are removed from this vine. Jesus taught in Matthew 7, verse 16 through 20, you will know them by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs from thistles, are they? So every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not bear fruit or good does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then you will know them by their fruits. Matt, uh, John 15, 6 and Matthew 7, 19 are describing the fires of hell, which is the destiny, destiny for unfruitful Christians or bad fruit producing Christians. Do people know you for good fruit or bad fruit? We close with John 15, verses 7 and 8. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Abiding in the vine, Jesus Christ affects your prayers. Bearing much fruit glorifies our God. Are you a part of this vine, Jesus Christ, so you can spend a wonderful Christian life bearing spiritual fruit? If you are a Christian, is God pleased with the fruit that you are bearing? I pray that this lesson on John 15 verses 1 through 8 would challenge you. I would even encourage you to reread these eight verses which we've just studied this day. May God bless you and I pray that this lesson will always or these verses will always be a, a source of encouragement and a blessing to your life.
Before we partake of the Lord's Supper, I'd like to read a passage of Scripture. I would invite you to even follow along with me in your own Bibles. I'm going to be reading from Matthew chapter 27, beginning with verse 33, and I'll be reading to verse 54, to prepare our minds for the partaking of the Lord's Supper. And there we find, when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave him wine to drink mixed with gall, and after tasting it, he was unwilling to drink. And when they had crucified him, they divided up his garments among themselves by casting lots. And sitting down, they began to keep watch over him. And above his head, they put up the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Now at that time, robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those passing by were hurling abuse at him, wagging their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and the elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is a king of Israel. Let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now, if he delights in him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The robbers who had been crucified with him were also insulting him with the same words. Now from the sixth hour, darkness fell upon all the land until the ninth hour. About the ninth hour, Jesus, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of those who were standing there when they heard it began saying, this man is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran and taken a sponge, he filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave him a drink. But the rest of them said, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now the centurion and those who were with him keeping guard over Jesus, when they saw the earthquake, and the things that were happening became very frightened and said, truly, this was the Son of God. Let us pray before we partake of the bread. Dear God, we come to you in prayer and we give thanks to you that you are our great God. We're thankful that we can partake of this bread to remind us of your son's sacrifice. Father, it is hard for us to read these words, to hear how they abused your son and our Savior. But dear God, we are indebted to you and thankful for what you've done for us. And for that reason, we seek your blessings upon our partaking of this bread. In Jesus' name, amen. You can pause this video if you need more time to partake of the bread. And now we'll go to our Father in prayer in preparation for partaking of the fruit of the vine. Dear God, we come to you in prayer and we thank you that this precious fruit of the vine takes us back to your son on the cross 
as he shed his precious blood for our sins. Again, Father, we are indebted to you. We love you. We thank you for all that you've done for us. Help us to always be mindful of your son's sacrifice for our sins in our everyday life as we seek to serve him and serve you. Father, we seek your blessings upon us as we partake of this fruit of vine. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we will continue with some more time in song before we have our closing prayer. to the end of our time of worship and we thank you for coming our way we pray that this Bible study and these songs and the opportunity to consider the Lord's sacrifice for our sins on the cross by partaking of the Lord's Supper has been a blessing to you I, I want to again remind you of our bulletin which lists our prayer list of individuals that need to remain in your prayers and also some other announcements, especially concerning some events that we have coming up this uh, uh, in the middle of this week. And so, again, if we can ever be of any source of help to you, please contact us. Let us now close our time together with prayer. And I hope you'll come back and be with us again uh, through this uh, opportunity this next Lord's Day. Let us pray. Dear God, we come to you in prayer and we lift up our praise and honor and worship of you. We praise your great name. We thank you for all that you've done for us. Father, we also lift up those on our prayer list that are dealing with cancer and other issues in their lives. We pray for your blessings be upon them. We pray that those who are have scheduled tests this week, that those tests will be uh, will find solutions for their health needs and their situations. And we pray, Father, that you will be with them and that they will find uh, good results from the events and these, the tests that they have scheduled this week. Father, we pray for those of this church family that have 
young ones and family and the military and armed forces around this world. We pray, Father, that you'll watch over them and keep them safe. Father, we pray for our missionaries that are in mission fields in this di these difficult times. Be with them, Father, as well. Father, we lift up our praise to you always, and thank you for being our great God. And we pray that you'll watch over us as we seek to serve you each day of our life. Help us, Father, to bear much fruit for your kingdom every day. And Father, when you prune us, so that we can bear even more fruit. Help us to be aware and be mindful of the opportunity that you're placing in our lap to serve you in better ways. And help us, Father, to never fail you when you provide us with opportunity to serve you even more. And we thank you, dear God, and we pray for more opportunities to serve you, and we pray we'll be faithful every time you provide us with an opportunity to bear more fruit. Dear God, thank you for hearing our prayers. We pray these things, Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.